Hi fellow Webflowers, welcome back to another Webflow tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build and animate this hero that I found on Dribble. And without further ado, let's start. As you can see, the uh, design is um, responsive. It's responsive because I have an um, embed field here for my custom styles and within here I'm just using um, some font smoothing and this CSS snippet uh, just to make the font sizes fluid responsive. Doing it this way is very good for the design because the design gets very precise and you get a um, responsive type scaling like this here. But uh, on the other hand, that's not um, the best for accessibility because uh, the user is not able to change the font size settings here. As you can see, it doesn't happen anything if I try to change the font sizes. But in this case, um, I want it to be precise in, in terms of design and that's why I use this kind of uh, font, font size settings. Yeah. So let's get uh, through it. So we have a navigation here. Within the navigation, we have a container and a couple of stuff, but and some padding here, but the nav inner is um, actually the interesting one because the nav inner is set to display flex, align center and um, uh, justify space between. And that does the magic here because uh, within there we have um, nav, a nav menu then the link for the logo and another nav menu. And both nav menus, they um, contain these two link elements. And because I'm using uh, justify uh, space between, they all get pushed to the outside. So if I do like this, it looks like that, or this way, or this way, or this way. I want it to look like this. So that's why this is the perfect setting. Uh, for this scenario. Probably notice this line here. This line, that's an interesting design element. It's positioned absolute and set to the bottom. Also with a margin auto on the left and the right. This brings it to the center. And itself is also display flex for this little ends you can see here at the beginning and at the end. And I call this line ends. This is just two squares with uh, six pixels and they are rotated by 45 degrees. One is at the left and one is at the right. And this is uh, because I used uh, display flex here, align center, and also here, uh, space between. So they are uh, pushed to, yeah, to the left and right. If I would use this, they uh, would just yeah, share the space here, but I want them to be on the left and the right at the end. And that's why, this setting here makes sense. And furthermore, um, margin auto makes sense here because as you maybe have noticed in the final result of the website, um, let's go here and refresh. You can see this line gets animated. This works because of this margin auto. And if I change the size here to, if I just shrink it down, you can see what is happening. It is growing from the center and that's what we need. But the default should be 100% in this. Um, scenario. So then we have this hero section here. We have a hero wrap, a container and a page padding large. Uh, in case you wonder what kind of section structure I was using here, I have a video about the perfect section structure. I use it day in and day out. I also used it here in this project. And uh, yeah, you will find a link uh, to the video somewhere here, wherever. <laughs> <laughs> click on it and watch it. You can learn Webflow best practice from it. But uh, back to this video, I'm using my section structure and the important thing here is this hero grid. And this hero grid, it has four rows and three um, column gap. And within there, we always have a hero grid row. You can see we have four hero grid rows. And within there, we have a heading wrap. So this one, and then an overflow hidden. It just does what it says. It uh, gives this diff overflow hidden and also um, uh, display flex. And within there, uh, we have the text size display. Um, and this is just the, the font size setting for um, this, this headline. And here I have a flex child sizing set to uh, don't shrink or grow because later when we are going to animate it, uh, we don't 
want to have here any line breaks uh, when we are manipulating uh, here this um, overflow hidden width. So let's say I just do it to something like 50%. You see like this, uh, I want it like this and the, the um, text should still be in one line. If I would take off this, it would break into a second line. So I need this um, don't shrink or grow. So it stays in, in position. Otherwise we would get strange glitches in our, our animation and we want to avoid that. Now everything looks very strange. Back to normal. And then we have just some text here that is positioned. Then we have this little button here that is um, an interesting button. I just see that something is um, not right here. So let's give it some sizing, 3M maybe or 2, 2.5. Okay, cool. I've used a link block for this button because a link block is more flexible than a, a button element because in a button element you can't place, you only can place text there. Uh, you can't place icons or other divs or stuff like that. So I actually always prefer um, a link block um, if I'm creating a button. And yeah, this one is set to display flex. It has a width of 100%. I gave it a max width of 18.56 EM and a height of 5 EM. And then we have a button inner. Um, this button inner is going to be animated. And I can show you what's going to happen if we go back to uh, the final result. You can see here what is happening. Let's do it again. So in order to make this happen, um, we will need to animate the width of this button inner. So you can see what is happening here. If I decrease the width, it shrinks to the right. Uh, so how did I do that? First of all, I gave it display flex, aligned it uh, to the center and justified it to the left. I did that because I always want, or the, the default state before the animation starts, um, it would look like this. See, and it should look like a perfect circle, uh, the outline. And if I use something different, it can, it can look strange. Next step is this button text. This button text is flex child sizing, don't shrink or grow again, because I don't want the text uh, to break. Uh, while the, the, the parent size is decreasing. So we have to set uh, don't shrink or grow. And um, I gave it uh, some, some padding here. So um, it's at the right position. You can see, so it's here at the right position. And because of this setup now, uh, one more thing, one more thing, the button inner is uh, position static, that's true. And the button icon is uh, position absolute and um, set here to the right, so it always stays there. And it's uh, position absolute to the, to the button, so to this element. And now I can shrink and grow the size of this one and it disappears. Okay, next thing is, uh, yeah, this headline is the same than the, the headline above. It just has a different color. It has a heading wrap, a overflow hidden, and a text size display. We will need this overflow hidden for the animations because this overflow hidden, um, it has overflow hidden, as the class name says. And later with the animation, it's like we will move it, move the, um, the, the text out and move it in with the animation. That's why we need this overflow um, hidden here. Then we have this uh, circle here. It's just, it just has a wrapper. Then it, there's a circle, that's the SVG graphic. We have another text. Uh, we have here another text and we have here this arrow. There's a little trick um, uh, on this arrow. If you have a look at the design, here's the arrow that I've exported and I've exported it without the circle in the background, but it has the same sizing. So it maintains the original size, the uh, one with the with the circle, it just makes it easier because if you have a look at the final result, a refresh, you can see the circle is growing here. And uh, yeah, so I need to animate the circle. Uh, only the arrow is the SVG and the circle is just a div element. So you can see it here. I have my hero arrow. It's the image with the exact same size uh, than the original from the design. And I also have a hero arrow circle here. Um, that is positioned absolute, it's uh, relative to um, its wrapper here and it has a size of uh, 6 cm and yeah, we will just 
animated uh, with a scale effect later. Then we have some more text here, some more text here, and just very simple a logo stripe. We have the exact same uh, line setup we have here in the navigation. And yeah, just some simple logos that are placed with display flex and again, justify space between. So now we walked through the HTML setup of this and CSS setup of this hero. And now we get to the fun part. Let's animate it. Yeah, let's start the animation. I go here to the animation tabs. I'm already prepared a page trigger here on page load. And we have um, an animation in here. It's empty and let's start with the logo. Because if we go back to the final result, you can see what is happening at the beginning. We only see this icon here and it uh, yeah, grows to the left and the navigation items, they drop from the top. And at the same time, this line uh, grows from the center. So I'm going to start with that one. So the first thing I do is I select the nav logo and I move it, um, set it as initial state and I move it something like 11 EM. Yeah, looks just fine. Then I'm grabbing my nav logo link. Also move, I drag it here. So it also gets set as initial state. And this time I uh, move it minus, so probably something like 6.5 EM. Yeah, it should sit in the center. It's not yet 100% in the center. And I select both of them. I duplicate them. And now I set this to something like one second. I choose out quart. I click here and we move it back. And this as well, we move it back. So let's see what's happening. We have exactly the effect we uh, want. Uh, maybe we want it to be a little bit longer, something like that. That was too long. So now I'm selecting my nav links here. Give them a move. Move it on the y-axis minus 5 EM. And I duplicate that one. Right click, change target and select the second one. Duplicate both of them, make them initial state. Change target, select the third one and do the same on the last one. Here we go. Uh, then I select all of them duplicate them and drag them on here. And I give them a duration of, let's try one second maybe, um, I use out court again. And this time I need a delay. The first one starts at zero, the second one starts at 0 0.2, the third one at, oh no, 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 at first one at zero, the um, here's the second one. This is the second one. The second one at 0 0.05. Let's try it this way. The third one. This is the third one. I can see it here. It's, sometimes this is a little bit confusing, but uh, 0 0.8. Or oh, let's try 0 0.1. And the last one at 0 0.15. So we always have a delay of 0 0.05 seconds here. And yeah, of course, I have to select them all and I have to bring them down. So yeah, you can see it looks like they happen all at once. Somehow my delay didn't really work. So let's do it again, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and the last one can also select it from here, 0 0.015. So now again, here they go. Okay, looks nice. Now I select my line and we do a size animation here. Uh, we start with 0%, use percent here, not pixel, EM or something else. 
and yeah, we duplicate it, we drop it here. We start with zero delay, that's fine. And we try something like 1.4 uh, out court and we animate it to 100%. And you can see what's happening. Yeah, looks nice. So next step is this uh, text here. And if we have a look at the results, yeah, it, um, this overflow container just, um, yeah, increases the size from the right to the left. And yeah, that's pretty easy to do. So we select our overflow uh, container here, uh, make a size, you can start here. Let's give it a, what's the delay of the last one? Let's give it a delay of uh, 0 0.2 and maybe a duration of one second out quart and 100%. Now I duplicate that and move it up here for the initial state and it will be zero. Yeah, you can see that it's working. Let's make it a little bit longer like that. Nice. This one only gets an opacity. So we start with an opacity of zero and yeah, we duplicate it, drop it somewhere here. Um, actually, I wanted to have a delay as well. Let's give it a delay of 0 0.3. And uh, this, in my experience, can have a very long duration out quart uh, to opacity 100. Yeah. Looks good. Then we go to the button inner and all we have to animate here is the size. So we start with a size of 0%. Again, it's important to use a percentage here and not some, uh, some, some fixed values like EM, REM or something else. Otherwise it would glitch the animation. So we duplicate it and we bring it here also and 1, 1.2 out quart 100% I think it can start a little bit ear earlier something like this yeah nice uh, this one gets animated from the top so I'm selecting my my text element and I give it a move and yeah, here top of the uh, of the navigation, I used 5EM. If I'm using 5EM here, you can see it totally disappears out of the viewport. So it seems like 1EM is much more in pixels than in other situations. That's bec um, the reason for that is that the, the text size actually here is defined with EM and I'm now defining EM um, an EM spacing value or a position value uh, on an element this is, that is already uh, defined with EM. And yeah, this is somehow multiplying um, the EM values. So uh, if you ever wonder why one EM doesn't always have the same uh, size, uh, that's the reason. So it's enough if we use something like one EM here. And let's duplicate that, bring it down here, 0 EM, use a duration of 1.2 and out quart again. Yeah, looks nice. Then this one, it gets an opacity here. Opacity, it starts with 0 and it also gets a scale here. There we go. We scale it from something like two. Um, I'm duplicating it, I'm dragging it down here somewhere. Uh, yeah, some, somewhere here. This one was with 0 0.3. So let's start both of them also with 0 0.3. And the opacity, again, I give a very long duration 
and the scale can be much shorter. The scale can be something like 1.2, and we scale it down to 1. Okay, that takes too long. Um, Ah, it's because it's linear. I forgot to um, use the out chord easing here. Yeah. Anyhow, it starts too late, 0 0.2. Yeah, something like this. Then this one. Oh. Kalender rausschneiden. Then this one. It just has an opacity. Let's make some fine tuning on this one, uh, on, on, on the circle. Opacity, we make it a little bit shorter, something like that. Yeah. And this one gets another opacity. So like, oh, drag it here, like this. We start with zero, duplicate it, drop it like it's hot here, yeah? and use, yeah, again, 1.2 seconds, out court. Mm, I forgot to turn up the opacity. Yeah, you can see this is 1.2 seconds and it looks too fast. So. Two seconds. Still too fast. 2.4. Still. Three. Mm. Four. Yeah, something like that. I could also try a different easing. I can use something like uh, out quad, maybe, and then try two seconds. Um, Yeah, let's uh, do it this way. Then this one here, um, this hero arrow, I want to move it in from, or let's have actually a look. Okay, it's, it grows and the circle also uh, grows. Select this one, move it up here, give it a width of 0% and duplicate it, move it down here and 100%, 1.2 seconds out quart again. Oh, okay, I can't use 100%, I have to use um, an EM value for that. Let's try 12 EM, 11 EM, okay. So I also have to use zero EM here. Yeah, looks good. And now the circle. Actually, I, I used a um, scale before, but I think I'm just using an opacity. I think that looks better, so opacity. zero, duplicate it, move it down again and bump up the opacity. Uh, yeah, 1.2 seconds out quart or yeah, two seconds. Here we go. And the off, where does it come from? From the top, okay. move again because I'm applying it directly on the text element that is set with EM its font size um, I'm just using minus one EM here this is enough and I'm duplicating that uh, putting it down here giving it 1.2 seconds and out 
chord. And this time I give it even a little bit more delay. Uh, yeah, and I have to bring it down to zero. Yeah, something like this is great. And now this one. I just have to shrink or de uh, increase the size of the overflow here. So let's do it again. Uh, size. width of 0% and duplicate it, turn it down oh, no, at the end here, something like that. Use 0 0.4 seconds in delay and yeah, this can be pretty long, 1.6 seconds out quart and 100%. So great, oh, a little bit too long. Yeah, like this. Okay, and last thing is this uh, logo line. Okay, the logos uh, get in with a delay and the line is growing. So let's do that. We move them. Like this. And we move them down something like probably 3M. Yeah, 3M is fine. And we also give them an opacity of zero. And I duplicate that, change the target to the second one, duplicate it again change the target to the third one, duplicate it once more and change the target to the last one. That's it. And yeah, now, now I duplicate all of them and I drag them down here. Now I just select the move elements all at once give them an easing of out quart, uh, give them 1.2 seconds and move them to zero. And then we need some more delay. This can start with um, 0 0.4, 0 0.45. Uh, I hate when it moves like that. Um, 0 0.5, 0 0.55. Okay, now we should have them in the correct order. I hope so. Let's try it out. Uh, we don't have it in the right order, but <laughs> let's fix it in a second. First thing I do is I turn up the uh, opacity, also with the out quart. And um, again, because it's opacity, I give it something like two seconds. You, know, you can see they come in nice, but uh, not from left to right. I have to fix that. So let's do this. Um, this is the first one. Yeah, I wanted to have a delay of 0 0.4. Okay, nice. Then here we have the second one. I wanted to have a delay of 0 0.45. Then the third one, 0 0.5. And the last one, 0 0.55. Okay, now it should work. Here we go. It looks a little bit laggy in uh, this preview, but uh, once we've published uh, the entire site, it won't lag anymore. So don't, don't wonder. And the last thing is animating these two lines. Uh, we need a size. Set the initial state to width of 0%. And uh, yeah, duplicate it. Change the target. Uh, select the second one like this. Select both. Duplicate. 
and bring it to the end. Uh, let's use out quart and grow them to 100%. Uh, yeah, I used out quart and yeah, 1.4 seconds, something like that. Yeah, here we go. Uh, we can use a little bit more delay on, on them. Mm, actually, they can start earlier. Yeah, something like that. And I think, I think also an opacity. Oh, and that's fine. Okay. So um, let's publish that. So here's the result. Let's refresh it. Yeah, you can see it looks great. Yeah, that's how you can build and animate a an hero like this. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any other tutorial ideas, just feel free and uh, leave it in the comments. I can add it to my bucket list and subscribe to my channel not to miss any of the following videos. And as mentioned at the beginning, I have another video where I show you how to uh, build or how to use a perfect section structure for your projects. Um, you can watch this video right here. And thanks for watching and as always, stay in the flow.